Hey everyone, hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be reading 2 Samuel 1, Job 39, and Ezekiel 24. Now let's pray before we get into the word. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this day that we might spend with you and get to know you a little bit more. Please guide us with your Holy Spirit to open up our hearts and our minds to anything you would have us to know in your word or anything you might be trying to point out in our lives today. Thank you so much for all the blessings that you poured out on us and allowing us to be a part of your perfect purpose. Please forgive us of our sins and lead us away from temptation that we might be more like you and glorify you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get started. Second Samuel 1 after the death of Saul, David returned from striking down the Amalekites and stayed in Ziklag two days. On the third day, a man arrived from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the ground to pay him honor. Where have you come from? David asked him. He answered, I have escaped from the Israelite camp. What happened? David asked. Tell me. The men fled from the battle, he replied. Many of them fell and died, and Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. Then David said to the young man who brought him the report, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, the young man said, and there was Saul, leaning on his spear, with the chariots and their drivers in hot pursuit. When he turned around and saw me, he called out to me, and I said, What can I do? He asked me, Who are you? An Amalekite, I answered. Then he said to me, Stand here by me and kill me. I am in the throes of death but I am still alive. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I knew that after he had fallen, he could not survive. And I took the crown that was on his head and the band on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. Then David and all the men with him took hold of their clothes and tore them. They mourned and wept and fasted till evening for Saul and his son Jonathan and for the army of the Lord and for the nation of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. David said to the young man who brought him the report, Where are you from? I am the son of a foreigner, an Amalekite, he answered. David asked him, Why weren't you afraid to lift your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of his men and said, Go, strike him down. So he struck him down and he died. For David had said to him, Your blood be on your own head. Your own mouth testified against you when you said, I killed the Lord's anointed. David took up this lament concerning Saul and his son Jonathan, and he ordered that the people of Judah be taught this lament of the bow. It is written in the book of Jeshur. A gazelle lies slain on your heights, Israel. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Lest the daughters of the Philistines be glad. Lest the daughters of the uncircumcised rejoice. Mountains of Gilboa, may you have neither dew nor rain. May no showers fall on your terrace fields, for there the shield of the mighty was despised, the shield of Saul, no longer rubbed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the flesh of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, the sword of Saul did not return unsatisfied. Saul and Jonathan, in life they were loved and admired in death they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed you in scarlet and finery, who adorned your garments with ornaments of gold. How the mighty have fallen in battle, Jonathan lies slain on your heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You are very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful more wonderful than that of women. How the mighty have fallen, the weapons of war have perished. Job 39 Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you watch when the doe bears her fawn? Do you count the months till they bear? Do you know the time they give birth? They crouch down and bring forth their young. Their labor pains are ended. Their young thrive and grow strong in the wilds. They leave and do not return. Who let the wild donkeys go free? 
who untied its ropes. I gave it the wasteland as its home, the salt flats as its habitat. It laughs at the commotion in the town, it does not hear a driver shout. It ranges the hills for its pasture and searches for any green thing. Will the wild ox consent to serve you? Will it stay by your manger at night? Can you hold it to the furrow with a harness? Will it till the valleys behind you? Will you rely on it for its great strength? Will you leave your heavy work to it? Can you trust it to haul in your grain and bring it to your threshing floor? The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully, though they cannot compare with the wings and feathers of the stork. She lays her eggs on the ground and lets them warm in the sand, unmindful that a foot may crush them, that some wild animal may trample them. She treats her young harshly, as if they were not hers. She cares not that her labor was in vain. For God did not endow her with wisdom, or give her a share of good sense. Yet when she spreads her feathers to run, she laughs at horse and rider. Do you give the horse its strength, or clothe its neck with a flowing mane? Do you make it leap like a locust, striking terror with its proud snorting? It paws fiercely, rejoicing in its strength, and charges into the fray. It laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. It does not shy away from the sword. The quiver rattles against its side, along with the flashing spear and lance. In frenzied excitement, it eats up the ground. It cannot stand still when the trumpet sounds. At the blast of the trumpet, it snorts. Aha! It catches the scent of battle from afar, the shout of commanders, and the battle cry. Does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread its wings toward the south? Does the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? It dwells on a cliff and stays there at night. A rocky crag is its stronghold. From there it looks for food. Its eyes detect it from afar. Its young ones feast on blood, and where the slain are, there it is. Ezekiel 24 In the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, record this date, this very date, because the king of Babylon has laid siege to Jerusalem this very day. Tell this rebellious people a parable and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Put on the cooking pot, put it on and pour water into it. Put into it the pieces of meat, all the choice pieces, the leg and the shoulder. Fill it with the best of these bones. Take the pick of the flock, pile wood beneath it for the bones. Bring it to a boil and cook the bones in it. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the city of bloodshed, to the pot now encrusted, whose deposit will not go away. Take the meat out, piece by piece, in whatever order it comes. For the blood she shed is in her midst. She poured it on the bare rock. She did not pour it on the ground, where the dust would cover it. To stir up wrath and take revenge, I put her blood on the bare rock, so that it would not be covered. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the city of bloodshed. I, too, will pile the wood high. So heap on the wood, and kindle the fire. Cook the meat well, mixing in the spices, and let the bones be charred. Then set the empty pot on the coals, till it becomes hot and its copper glows, so that its impurities may be melted and its deposit burned away. It has frustrated all efforts. Its heavy deposit has not been removed, not even by fire. Now your impurity is lewdness, because I tried to cleanse you, but you would not be cleansed from your impurity. You will not be clean again until my wrath against you has subsided. I, the Lord, have spoken. The time has come for me to act. I will not hold back. I will not have pity, nor will I relent. You will be judged according to your conduct and your actions, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, with one blow I am about to take away from you the delight of your eyes. Yet do not lament or weep or shed any tears. Groan quietly. Do not mourn for the dead. Keep your turban fastened and your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your mustache and beard or eat the customary food of mourners. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and in the evening my wife died. The next morning I did as I had been commanded. Then the people asked me, Won't you tell us what these things have to do with us? 
Why are you acting like this? So I said to them, The word of the Lord came to me. Say to the people of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am about to desecrate my sanctuary, the stronghold in which you take pride, the delight of your eyes, the object of your affection. The sons and daughters you left behind will fall by the sword, and you will do as I have done. You will not cover your mustache and beard or eat the customary food of mourners. You will keep your turbans on your heads and your sandals on your feet. You will not mourn or weep, but will waste away because of your sins and groan among yourselves. Ezekiel will be a sign to you. You will do just as he has done. When this happens, you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. And you, son of man, on the day I take away their stronghold, their joy and glory, the delight of their eyes, their heart's desire, and their sons and daughters as well, on that day a fugitive will come to tell you the news. At that time your mouth will be opened. You will speak with him and will no longer be silent. So you will be a sign to them, and they will know that I am the Lord. Thanks for joining and listening today. If you have any questions, leave them down here in the comments section, and I'll be making some videos where I go through some of those questions, show you some of the questions that I had, and maybe we can find some answers or even dive into it together. Thanks, guys. Hit the like and subscribe, and come back for more. All right, guys. Take it easy. Bye. God bless.